600 gallons gone. I like that. Things are thirsty. Hi, I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family's been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. 70 degrees out. You're cold all of a sudden? Yeah, the wind's a little nippy. It's chilly this morning. Yeah, it feels it's good like though. The, yesterday was the last day in the next 10 days that's supposed to be above 90. Oh, it's going to be glorious from now on out. But you got to remember, I'm skinny. I'm skinny. There's no meat here. You need some more flubber. Yeah, just a little. We're well, back in the combine here this morning. Quinn's back and him and Colin got the sickle drive grease. There's a couple of zerks up there that are daily. Uh, a couple other ones and uh, we're ready to go. If you look real close right there, there's a fast egg sticker on this header now. So, if you see this header with the fast egg sticker on it, take a picture of it and send it to me. Good luck finding it. I'm not going to tell you where it's going from here. Well, didn't do a whole lot of filming yesterday. We're cutting in some really rocky hills, and today, a lot more comfortable with the header. Good. Kind of a mental thing for how flexible that cutter bar is and the rocks that are out there. Absolutely. Especially when our land rollers wider sections, like 10 to 12 foot sections. Yeah. So I always got that like idea that that rock didn't get pushed down, and the header's gonna pick it up, but it doesn't. Right. Right. Especially the higher air pressure we run on the system, so. Yeah, it's been fun to kind of play with this wheel, just kind of see how to tailor it in and how to kind of customize the, the header to the field. Yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been pleased with it. Yeah, well, you guys make gopher hole. Oh boy. Badger hole. Just leave some food out here for him later. <laughs> also, on camera, it doesn't do a very good job of showing what the header's doing. Either, I don't think. The yeah. depth perception isn't there. But you can definitely tell the difference between the two headers. This field finish from this honeybee is a lot better. Every little bit it's dropping down and catching where that back dawn will balance, balance over it. The header might come up, but the cutter bar drops and keeps cutting on the ground until the header comes back down. Right. Where that back dawn, the whole header balances over it. You've been putting it to the test, that's for sure. That's uh, it's pretty fun. We haven't put the and fast yet. <laughs> I think we will once we get a little softer terrain, if you will. I think we'd pick up a lot of ground speed too if it was a flatter field, but we've just got all these little dips we're slowing down through and, right. and just letting that air flex do its thing. Right. Kind of just watch that end out there, how much that, that yellow crop divider is bouncing up and down. It shows you how much that cutter bar is moving too, because that's directly tied to that cutter bar. It's probably really hard to tell, but you can see like the skips over there with Dad's header bounced where the combine, you know, drop through the washout. And then this first cut here is where the honeybee just shaved the ground so smooth. But then there's spots where we go through a valley where this doesn't bend like the wings, so it kind of fits your ground. Right, there are particular areas where the wing, the bat wing will capture more. And it depends on what your settings are too. So if you have it in max flex mode, then you're not gonna have as much flow. The table's gonna be heavier, but you'd have to go a lot slower. Yeah. You know, so just basically to say exactly what you just said, only slower and longer with more detail. <laughs> I'll be here all week. <laughs> Literally. All, all, all week? No, um, all, all week? Oh, oh well, no, good portion. <laughs> well, we're straightening out an edge here, and so we got some gap out here where we're covering what was already cut, but it's a good judge and seeing how that flex or that cutter bar works. See how it's moving up and down, contouring the ground. You can kind of see how the those guards are still, even though it's flexing down, the guards are still running flat. There, it's really flexing. Then it'll come back down. So we've got a big goalie coming.
that part I really like how I just right. the finish of the field is so much nicer. Glad I'm wearing boots, prickly pear. Walked through one, didn't realize it. Stuck in my pant leg and in my boot. Here comes my favorite part, not really, the downhill descent. I got 27,000 pounds on me. Yeah, I'm just gonna creep down. Made it. Oh, I don't like that downhill. Every time I come down, I, I Oh, it scares me, especially after Jack me. <laughs> <laughs> We just got done cutting the peas here at the yard and uh, dropping the honeybee header off onto the transport. We're gonna run back down the valley where I left my header. Go finish that cutting with the mat gone, so we'll kind of see what it's like to jump back and forth. Quinn's gonna get this one ready to go with the skid plates on it for cutting wheat uh, probably tomorrow.
face it. Let me get to the other end first. Tony's coming in hot. Get a lap is dead. You can closer. Get a little golden hour shot. Oh, they're ne <laughs> They're so close. They're almost matching. Double dumping. Well, back with the Mac Dawn and just uh, cutting peas. A few peas already shelled out on the ground. I see, oh, I'm guessing there's three bushels that shelled out down there. About eight to nine seeds make per square foot makes three bushels. That's usually what our population is for planting. And this stuff's uh, dry for the most part, but there's still green spots that are causing us fits. So we're just gonna have to take the green with the dry and uh, not let any more fall on the ground. And uh, maybe move it around, make sure it doesn't get sticky in the bins. Because those pods will stick to the bin walls and that will cause moldy pods to stick there. That causes heat and that heat will kind of get into that galvanized. So. A lot of this going on that wasn't going on with that honeybee, but these are a little taller, a little bigger, fluffier plants, but that's hard to tell. I didn't see that really happening with that honeybee. So one point for the honeybee there, I guess a little more evenly feeding peas. Going home. Good morning. Running a little bit of a skeleton crew today. Dad is working with the crop adjusters on figuring out yield on his peas as well as my canola that we hope we're not cutting. I'm pretty sure we're not going to be cutting any of that because there's nothing to cut there. And um, yeah, I'm not buying bananas by the case. That's uh, butcher boxes for uh, picking up the beef from the butcher. Got to return them. So yeah, there's that. Call him dump in the truck. Got a grain cart loading and dump, and then uh, they'll probably hop in a combine. I'm gonna go start cutting. Back over at the bin site, gonna move bin. That one's pretty well full. We're just gonna move into the smaller 6,500 bushel bin, and that should be enough room for the rest of the peas that we have to cut over here at this farm. So let's move the auger. Or not auger, conveyor. Now we'll see how good I am at hitting. Oh, wrong one. There! In the bin! That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. It's dusty. The wind's blowing the wrong way today. Woo. Yo! Since Tony has like a few rounds left, there's no sense in me getting in the combine and going out there. So I'm going to go get the header trailers and bring them back back to this field so that we can take the headers off here and then get ready to move. Just grinding through the peas here yet. Dad been running around at the adjuster, is not back yet. Sounds like about 3,000 acres crossed off the list that we're not gonna have to harvest this year. Brings us to the grand total of 5,500 acres harvested already, I guess. 6,000 to go.
There. Both header trailers are here now. Now, I think I'm gonna walk to the grain cart. That way we don't have to drive something out or Tony doesn't have to come get me. Which, way over there. I'm gonna start walking. Get my exercise in for the day. Well, the peas are done, except for these green ones we gotta leave. We'll be back. Whoop. Wash shot coming. Slow down. There we go. All right, let's go cut some Durham after we move 30 miles again. Sprinkling out. Yeah. Could have used that a month ago. Well, good morning. Chickens are clucking. No wind. I think the smoke's gone in the air. It'll be a good day. Well, we ended up moving combines over last night, yesterday afternoon, whatever it was, and did a little cutting in that Durham, and uh, it's not gonna run great. It's gonna be right around five bushels, if that, I believe. So, that's the market on Durham. It keeps on going up and up and up. We're gonna wanna cut every bushel we can because, I don't know, maybe we're just wasting our time, but it's gonna be worth more and more come fall. It's like 13 bucks a bushel right now over on the North Dakota border, so it could get a lot higher. I could be over 20 bucks here in January would be my guess. I wouldn't be surprised if it got that high anyways. The crop insurance numbers aren't gonna be that great on price, so whatever we can combine at this price, just make a little more money on it. And when the crop's worth that much money, even four bushels, it's worth our time harvesting because it co probably costs us around 15 bucks an acre to harvest. So one bushel, almost one bushel, over one bushel, it's worth it for us. So, so we're gonna go do later today, but time to feed some cows. Better eat quick, there's not enough for everybody. Well, Quinn, what you think? You're stealing my header away. Yeah, it's gotta go. It's gotta jump back across the border. That's right, going back up to Canada. To the next demo it goes. We did cut a little derm with it last night and uh, took a little adjustment yeah, on the right. reel, but really short grain, it actually fed pretty good. Yeah, got it dialed in. Think about this being kind of a big surface to get it past, but it worked all right. Yeah, see how close these teeth are. Yeah. And honestly, if you dealt with really short crops all the time, you probably would put an aerial on it. Yeah, I think but so. But that kind of goes with any short, header? Short, yeah, and short and light. I mean, yeah. that was pretty light stuff to try to... If this stuff was waist tall, it would be no problem. Right. right. So, yeah. We sang Tom Petty to it. We had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't hurt my little honeybee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. good but time. it's a good header. Good. Definitely something we'll consider. Good. Excited about it, yeah. So. Um, Appreciate the time. Thank you very much yeah. for letting us out here. And for all the it's people awesome. that are want, interested, yeah, ask your dealer about a demo. Yeah, do it. That's I mean, what they're here for. You got, what is this, like the third demo machine or head that you've used this year? Uh, yeah. You got exactly. two in Montana, this one came down yeah. from Canada. So. Yep, and one, one in North Dakota going, and so the, we're running demos all over the place. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Companies like to show off their stuff, so you buy them. So That's right. Reach out, people no matter like what kind drive. of equipment it is. Yeah, exactly. People like to test drive, so it's fun. And. Uh, yeah, thanks again. This, yeah. I really appreciate what you're doing too. Now get out of here. <laughs> well, putting a 45 foot mat back on the combine here, and a uh, few things I noticed. What I don't like about this head now is I can't see my cutter bar. Crazy cross augers in the way. I'd much rather be able to see that, but oh well. I got a call on just working there. Now it needs a rag. Well, Colin got fuel in both combines and the cart tractor, 600 gallons gone. I like that. Things are thirsty. I haven't been filled up for a couple days. So, heading home. A little green yet, and uh, I don't know, I'm gonna go to the lake. So, 
Don't forget, farm hard, pray harder. See you next video.